Hey everyone, geophysicist Stefan Burns here. We are right now firmly embedded within the high speed stream that is flowing out of this trans equatorial coronal hole. Solar wind velocity is around 700 kilometers per second. The solar wind density is dropping precipitously below our threshold that we watch, which is less than one particle per cubic centimeter as it relates to earthquakes and specifically high magnitude earthquakes. And this trans-equatorial coronal hole is special because of A, its negative polarity, meaning it couples nicely to Earth's magnetic field with the magnetic field that it emits well out into space. B, this high-speed stream is flowing out exactly along the ecliptic plane because it does cut through the solar equator and it's also lined up perfectly with four periods of heightened earthquake activity here on Earth over the past 90 days. So we have these reoccurring connections to this high speed stream and then it's right afterwards when the solar wind density is very low that we get these really high magnitude earthquakes. Now just in the past week, we've already had a lot of powerful earthquakes. We had that magnitude 7.6 in the Drake Passage that's south of South America on the 10th of October. We also had the 7.4 in the Philippines on the same day, a little bit before, 6.7 in the Philippines, 6.6 .6 Papua New Guinea, 6.3 Papua New Guinea, 6.1 off the coast of Kamchatka, another magnitude six in the Philippines, 5.9 in the Philippines. So we're already in a zone of heightened earthquake activity at a global scale, and now the conditions are set up for us to have more high magnitude earthquakes, at least as it relates to a space weather perspective. You can also add in the fact that we have a ton of comets right now close in, in the inner solar system, which is quite anomalous. It's probably something that happens regularly with some rhythm, but it is happening right now. And we also have some pretty notable planetary geometry, most specifically, with Saturn and Neptune performing their great conjunction. So we are right now in an earthquake watch. We are right now also in this high-speed stream, geomagnetic storming at a G1 level. And we're also having some sunspots right now on the Earth-facing side of the sun rapidly develop. So all that and much more in today's video. We'll begin with our real-time solar wind as provided by the Space Weather Prediction Center. And in fact, we are right now in a G1 storm. This data just released 5.33, so that's a G1 plus storm. Now this is our KP index, a measure of geomagnetic volatility. We make these measurements from all these different ground-based magnetometers which observe Earth's magnetic field. They take all that data and they compile it into a KP index going from zero to nine and if it reaches a level of five, that's a G1 storm. A level of nine on the KP index is a G5 extreme storm. So that's a little bit of understanding for you. But here we see our solar wind properties as observed by the uh, satellites that we have at the L1 Lagrange point, 1% of the distance from the Earth to the sun. They give us about a one hour heads up. We see our solar wind plasma temperature, the velocity, the density, and then our interplanetary magnetic field. Look at how the velocities rapidly increase. So this high-speed stream has connected. We see it went up to nearly 800 kilometers per second at one point, settled down to about 700, though right now it's clicking in at 742 kilometers per second. And look at how the density has been dropping. So we were all the way here at like 14, 15 particles per cubic centimeter, but now we are getting close to one. In fact, some of these periods there were below one. And that is specifically what we watch as it relates to high magnitude earthquakes and the connection that they have to space weather because it really lines up the best. Of all the things that we can look at, it's uh, after these high speed stream impacts when we're in that solar wind void, that is when these earthquakes seem to pop out of the earth. And maybe it's due to some sort of expansionary effect. There being less pressure from the outside on the earth allows it to just expand a little bit more and then at the crustal scale, that results in a fault slipping and then boom, big earthquake. And what we've just had a bunch of high magnitude earthquakes. And so now that we're in this earthquake watch, there's no guarantee that we're gonna have more big earthquakes. But if that is the case, and we're in the perfect conditions to have them, that means that this elevated earthquake activity that we've been having is going to continue, which will make it quite anomalous. And here we can see the past week of noble earthquake activity that we've been having 
as provided by the USGS. And you see three distinct zones. It's not hard to see them. We see Kamchatka up there, we see Papua New Guinea, and then we also see the Philippines. Uh, but this is actually, in fact, not the main zone because the biggest earthquake that we've had was down here in the Drake Passage, one that was forecasted on this channel quite accurately. So that was a magnitude 7.6. And in fact, there's been quite a lot of earthquakes in this area and it's quite bizarre. Three big earthquakes now, magnitude 7.4, 5, and 6 in that sequence in 2025. Whereas normally this area, yeah, it can get big earthquakes, but it's not that active at that reoccurrence interval. Usually it's like years or decades in between. So this has been building up. We could see a magnitude 8 plus earthquake from this location in general in the near future. That is possible. It is important to note that this is nearly an exact antipode with Kamchatka, where we had the magnitude 8.8 .8 megaquake, as well as multiple magnitude sevens, tons of sixes and fives, and we're still having activity there. So even after the most recent uh, magnitude 7.8, 7.9, we're still getting magnitude six earthquakes. We see right here, 6.1 that occurred on the 9th of October. So that is this guy right there. That's a big earthquake. They're not slowing down. I mean, they are reducing in magnitude, it seems, but we don't know if we're going to continue to get big earthquakes there. And the overall amount of energy released from Kunchaka has been a lot more than it has been from uh, down here, even though three mag sevens popped off, that 8.8 .8 had so much more energy in it than all those combined. And so if we're talking about the antipodal relationship and there being a balance of energy between them, we could get that energy to balance out with a big magnitude 8.5 earthquake there. Not saying it's gonna happen, but I do think there is an increased chance of there being a magnitude eight plus earthquake in this zone in the next six months, year or so. It could be even sooner than that. Other areas specifically for this week, uh, the Philippines, very, very active, 7.4, and then aftershock, 6.7, and then a lot of activity in Papua New Guinea as well. This 6.6 .6 there, followed by a 6.3 a few days later. So we've already been having a lot of earthquake activity for the past week. And now that we are in these space weather conditions that seem to promote high magnitude earthquake activity, that could continue. And in addition to all that, new sunspots are rapidly forming on the sun. Let's check it out. Here we have our past 48 hours of sunspot activity on the earth facing side of the sun. And look at these two regions here rapidly developing. This one being earth center and direct effectively right now, just a little bit beyond that, this one about to rotate in. So we have not been seeing super big activity from them, though there was just a little bit of a release from this guy, but at any point that could change. The sun is very, very dynamic. So just in the past few days, we went from a low sunspot count of about 60 all the way up now to 130. And it's likely to go to continue rising, perhaps even to 200 and beyond. So we are right now in an upswing as it relates to sunspots and new sunspots are rotating in. This region there is quite bright. Let's check it out with our 304 Angstrom view. And here we have our 304 Angstrom view of the sun, which allows us to see the surface quite nicely. We'll see two things. First off, this puff of plasma right there. So this wasn't anything major, but this is about the biggest disturbance that we saw over the past day or so from the sun. And that doesn't seem to really be shooting anything our way, but it's worth pointing out. Here we see the rapid growth of that sunspot group. Also this one as well, but look at this broad diffuse region. So these are by far definitely the two biggest sunspot groups on the earth facing side. But in general, this area here is more active and we don't know what exists beyond the limb. So we're gonna have to wait a couple of days to see what rotates in. But looks like we are in for a new wave of solar activity, at least as it relates to sunspots. And just each one of those, you have to remember is a little magnetic vortex and they're not little, they're actually the size of the earth or bigger and those magnetic vortices extend out into space. So there's a lot of interesting dynamics that we don't fully know, understand, or even are aware of uh, as it relates to the sun and these internal vortices and the magnetic field and what's happening within the sun. But certainly we're in solar maximum right now with solar cycle 25 
and with this crowding of comets that we have in the inner solar system that is probably exerting a strong influence on the overall electromagnetic circuit of the inner solar system because comets are electromagnetic in nature they have these dust tails ion tails elemental tails they get ionized they become plasma so we don't know how the sun is going to react over the next few months but we do seem to be in a new period of heightened solar activity as compared to what was happening back in May and in June and in July. So in general, you may wanna be prepared for some big solar activity, some big solar flares, and for some big geomagnetic storms in the weeks and months ahead. And to wrap up, I would like to discuss this solar shockwave that I was talking about in the past couple of videos. We picked up this big plasma structure that swept by solar orbiter halfway in between the sun and the earth a few days ago. I was expecting us to have some space weather as a result of that. Well, we never had that come in. We are now in this coronal hole high speed stream, but we never had that shockwave impact. And I realized why that's the case. So it's because solar orbiter was 10 degrees above the ecliptic of plane. Uh, as viewed from Earth, and so it's elevated, and it's only 10 degrees, but it's halfway back to the sun. And so if you have the sun and the Earth and solar orbit is 10 degrees up, well, you extend that line out to the Earth, and it means that whatever hits solar orbiter, if it is aligned properly, it could sweep just above the Earth. So I think that's why we didn't get hit by that solar shockwave. I think it was a very close miss. Thankfully for a lot of people, because they feel these energies very, very strongly, they're bioelectrically sensitive. If you are, you have to go outside and make sure you do some grounding, which is connecting to the electric field of the earth, just bare feet on grass is best. You can go for a walk on the beach if you have access. Uh, even surfaces like concrete are conductive, but asphalt is not, your rubber soled shoes are not. Then also make sure you like move your body, go for a walk every single morning, you know, get the blood pumping. All these things are super good for you. Eat a good clean diet, drink nice, good, clean spring water, uh, breathe fresh air, and be mindful of what you're consuming, the energy and information contained, and also spend some time within yourself. Explore the cosmos within. If you're interested in picking up some of the new channel merch, it is available on the website. This is earthevolution.com slash store. We have a whole bunch of products there which you can check out. We have all organic herbal tea blends that we make and mix ourselves, my father and I. Uh, Herb Coffee is one of the top sellers. We also have different merch like the Interstellar 3i Atlas shirt, one of the all time best sellers. But now we have the latest merch and I absolutely love this shirt. The Cosmos Within t-shirt, 100% cotton, unisex sizing from small to quadruple XL. And it comes in white as well as this midnight blue color that I'm wearing. And yeah, look at the back. Artwork from my father, Lee Burns, on the back, Cosmic Pyramids, which he painted earlier this year in a creative burst. And I just love uh, the energy that this shirt brings in. The sacred geometry of the Fibonacci spiral right over the solar plexus on the front, the reminder of the work that we have to do in this lifetime, in this uh, earthly experience. And then also the artwork bringing in that kind of celestial influence, but also uh, some of that ancestral ancient knowledge and wisdom. So if you'd like to pick this up, this is available for everyone in the United States. It's printed to order and then shipped to you directly. It will take some time to produce. So uh, make sure you order it to the right address and also make sure you have some patience with that. But this shirt is super comfortable for reference. I'm six foot and about half an inch over that. And I'm wearing a size large, it fits great. Uh, but if you're in any doubt, order a size up because we don't accept any returns for this. So uh, yeah, happy to help you along this cosmic journey. Please subscribe to the channel if you'd like to stay up to date on what is happening with the Earth energetically. Earthquakes, volcanoes, solar activity, space weather, planetary resonances, cosmic forces, all that and more we explore on the channel. Again, I've been your host, Stefan Burns. Thank you all so much. Wishing each and every single one of you well. Please take care of yourselves, and I'll see you all very soon.